Hi guys, yesterday we talked about this for a little minute, the boundaries of children. Today, we're gonna to talk about it a little bit more. Okay, do you have a belief, ask yourself this honestly, that an adult's desires are more important than the boundaries of children? Do you believe that an adult's desires are more important than the boundaries of children? I think many or most or possibly all of us actually do have this belief. And it comes from, uh, you know, our lived life where as children, the desires of adults appeared to be more important than our personal boundaries. I'm sure you've had plenty of experiences that showed you that that was um, how other people in your life felt about the adult child hierarchy, right? Um, I'm thinking of this time we visited my great grandparents and my great grandpa looked like a skeleton with skin on him. And my parents made me sit on his lap. It is still like one of my worst memories. Gross. I had to like hug him. It was the worst. And like, guess what? I know you've had the same experience. You've had, you've had experiences similar or possibly deeply worse where adults forced you to do things that you didn't want to do. And you didn't have a choice because you were a child and an adult's desires were more important than your boundaries. We like as as people that were children who had our boundaries violated, we can look back and see like, oh, that was gross. Um, but I think a lot of us as adults then perpetuate the cycle because as adults, we start to see with new eyes. You know, for example, I uh, you could say I violated my kids boundaries the other day when I held her down and changed her diaper because she has a diaper rash. And the last thing that she needs is to have a poopy diaper on her open sore on her bum for hours to come because she doesn't want me to wipe her bum because it hurts. You know, as parents, we have to navigate these difficult situations where like, but you see it with a different perspective. Of course, not all adults in our lives when we were children had our best interests in mind. And so it gets, you know, it gets a little messy as we deal with this issue for ourselves, but healing from this, um, this is how we learn wisdom. Once again, boundaries, it comes down to wisdom. How do we become wise? This is how we become wise. When we can look at these different situations in life and see so clearly um, that, you know, we can respect a child's boundaries and we can at the same time realize when it's not appropriate to respect a child's boundaries and you have to force them to put on their seatbelt or you have to force them to have a diaper change when they don't want it. And, you know, we start to learn when it is appropriate and when it is not appropriate. And I don't know, that's wisdom. I, I mean, I, I think of uh, a couple of days ago, I mentioned uh, in the scriptures when Abraham takes his wife, Sarah, to the Pharaoh and, and Abraham tells the Pharaoh that Sarah is his sister and not his wife. Um, God doesn't think lying is okay. Lying is against the 10 commandments. And also um, there is a time in God's divine wisdom when perhaps it is okay for a guy like Abraham to say that his wife is his sister. It just depends a little bit on the situation. Um, I guess it comes down to that spirit of the law versus the letter of the law. Really, the most important thing is tuning in with our creator every day with all of our decisions and making sure that we're doing the right thing. Easier said than done. Um, this is a lifestyle. This is a you know, it's a daily practice that we have to put into practice. We have to try it. And I'm not perfect at it. Like I try really hard. And I, I, the thing is, I fully know that that is what needs to be done. I know that. And that's why I teach it because I literally know that's how we succeed in this life. We connect with our creator every minute. Am I personally always connected every minute? Uh, probably not judging by how often I yell at my kids. Um, you know, I'm not perfect and I'm trying every day. I just try again and we just have to keep trying and know that we don't have to be perfect right now. We just have to do our best right now. I know that some people get hung up on that because they say, was this really my best? Did I really do my best? I probably should have, could have done better. And the thing about pneumonia was that it really taught me that I didn't know what my best was. Uh, in the couple of weeks before I was hospitalized for pneumonia this past summer, I... I don't know. I just remember judging myself for not doing as much as I thought I could or thought I should. And I had no idea that I was in the middle of this like massive bacterial infection in my lungs that was slowing me down. I was sitting there saying, this is not my best. 
it was my best. It was more than my best. And I got myself hospitalized. You may think you're qualified to judge if you've, if you've done your best, but you are not. You are not qualified to judge that. One person is qualified to judge that. And that is our creator who knows behind the scenes, who knows, oh, Allie, uh, you did do your best. You had a raging bacterial infection in your lungs that almost killed you. Uh, you know, uh, where has, where have you been doing your best? And you've been telling yourself it probably wasn't your best. You could have done better. And you didn't know what else was going on behind the scenes. You didn't know what kind of generational trauma you were processing totally unconsciously. You didn't know what genetic conditions were keeping you feeling more tired than you thought that you should be. You didn't know what kind of uh, environmental toxicity or what kind of infections you were carrying in your organs for years that was hampering your functionality and you just didn't know. But our creator knows. Our creator knows. Okay, so let's revise it. Let's say you don't have to try your best. Just try. Just try it all. I like that a lot better, actually. Don't do your best. Just just try. Just try anything. And can you trust that just trying gives you so many points? You get so many points just for showing up and trying. Just for just for giving it a go, you know? Can you give it a go to connect with your creator today just for a minute? And ask a question. See what comes into your mind. Take some little action. Just trying is, that's everything. All you have to do is try. Okay, let's talk about children for one more second and then we'll call it a day. Um, the book has some good stuff on, about this. Um, let's just tap some things in. Children deserve to have their own boundaries. Children deserve to have their own boundaries. It is important when a child's boundaries are violated and I can validate that to children. It was important when my boundaries were violated as a child, and I can validate that to myself. Go ahead and breathe it in. Today, um, now that I've like brought up boundary violations in children, sorry, I know that can be dark depending on your childhood. Um, today, I just want you to hold space for yourself. I want you to think what whenever things come up from your childhood today about boundaries and um, times that your boundaries were violated and you wish that they hadn't been, I want you to honor what happened and feel your feelings and allow yourself to know that it was not okay and that our creator is holding you in the palm of his hand and that things may not be made right right this minute, but they will be made right eventually. Your job is to just try. You don't have to try your best. Just show up and try something. Just try a little bit. To me, I feel like our creator is really happy when even if that's all we do. Just show up and try a little bit. You can do it, okay? I'll see you tomorrow.